What's up NASCAR Authentics fans? One of the best things NASCAR has done in recent years is the Darlington throwback race. It's been a fantastic success. We've gotten some really nostalgic paint schemes and one of the best things about all of it of course is the fact that we get die cast replicas of some of the most iconic schemes that have ever raced in NASCAR. Particularly some of the ones you're looking at right here at least to a person like me. These are three cars out of 2018's Wave 8 and these are three specific cars that I have very fond memories of as a child. So we're going to be taking a look at these three cars, these three die casts from wave number eight. But we're also going to be doing a bonus mystery throwback car. And you're going to have to wait till the end of the video to check out what that one is. But I'll just give you a hint. It relates to one of these cars. Hmm, I wonder which one it is. So our first throwback we're going to be taking a look at is Kyle Busch's number 18 Skittles throwback. This is throwing it back specifically to Derek Cope's 1997 Pontiac, though this scheme also ran with Ernie Irvin in 98 and 99. Beautiful, beautiful car. I have great memories of this one, and I can't wait to share some of those with you. But real quick, we'll take a look at the back of the package because you're going to want to see what else is in the wave. And there you go. Uh, most of the rest of the wave is kind of boring, though I know that that one's in liquid color and is going for like 50 bucks on eBay. So if you find that one, uh, maybe pick it up. Also, there's a Ron Caps, or not Ron Caps, but a uh, Robert Height funny car in this wave. And by the way, I bought it. So there it is if you wanted to see that one. Uh, but this is a NASCAR review, so we're going to stick to the NASCAR uh, stuff today. And let's get Kyle Busch's car out. I don't even remember if this has been released yet in the Gold Series. So. This may be a first for many of you to see this car out of its box. So let's get it out. The old classic hood. That's a beautiful piece. Can't wait to take a closer look at that one. And here we go. Rainbow Warrior Skittles car. That's probably sacrilegious to say. Ah, yes. The inspiration for Cal Cat, Cal Bush in the Skittles Camry Toyota. Beautiful car. Beautiful paint scheme. Just fantastic. Uh, this was one that I think a lot of people were very excited about. I don't even remember if Kyle Busch ran a, a, a throwback in last year's race. I know he did the Interstate Batteries one the year before. Uh, but this was one I think a lot of people wanted because we all kind of remember, at least if you're of a certain age, you remember this particular Skittles car before it switched to the M&M's car that a lot more people are familiar with uh, in the time that Ernie Irvin and then Kenny Schrader were driving the car. But this specifically is Derek Cope's car, and one of my memories of this car in particular is it crashing at the Brickyard 400 in 97. Uh, that's one of, and it was a pretty heavy crash out of turn two as well. Uh, yeah, Derek Cope did not, did not fare too well in this car, hence why he didn't drive it for very long. Uh, but yeah, I mean, just look at it. Uh, I, I love the fact that rainbow cars were a thing in uh in the 90s uh, obviously this is not the most famous example of a rainbow car a certain driver by the name of, of jeff gordon you might have heard of him ran a rainbow car at one point but uh yeah uh, in terms of a throwback this is about as good as it gets let's take a closer look at some of the details you can see the throwback contingency sponsors some of the extra sponsors uh, along the side the colors really really pop i remember when i saw some pictures of this earlier uh, or when it was revealed, I didn't think they had the colors quite right. It didn't seem like it was quite right. But I think this is a pretty good approximation. I think it was the dark red that threw me off. I can't remember if the real car had this quite dark of red on the side. It may have, but uh, that's not the way I remember it. Taste of the Rainbow, of course. The classic Skittles logo. Just, just an all-around really good-looking car. There's not a whole lot to say about it. Lionel did a great job replicating this one. And, yeah, that's just a, a, a nice, well, I could say a pouch, a sweet little pouch of nostalgia. Let's go on to the next car. The second car we'll be taking a look at is Kurt Busch's number 41 Haas CNC throwback to his 2003 scheme, the uh, rubber head, not rubber head, that's what Ster uh, Sterling Mar Marlin called him, uh, the rubber med uh, uh, Sharpie car, or uh, rubber, I can't remember what it was, rubber med, I, I can't remember what the, I, I can only remember the meme, oh no, that's a problem. Anyway, regardless, rubber made, rubber made Sharpie 41. I knew it was in there somewhere. I think Little Tykes was a sponsor of this car as well, if I remember correctly. But regardless, 
Here you go. Kurt Busch's Haas CNC car. It's actually a pretty clever paint scheme. And again, it's certainly one that uh, is nostalgic for a lot of people. Of course, as we kind of get uh, closer and closer to the modern era, more and more people will have nostalgia for a lot of these throwbacks and thus uh, kind of be into them more than, say, the throwbacks from the 60s, 70s, 80s. You know, you get to the 90s, yeah, there's certainly old geezers like me who are really into them. Once you get into the 2000s, everybody's all about these paint schemes. So I think this one's going to be pretty popular. Let's get it out of its box. And it's always kind of fun to have a driver do a throwback to a car that they raced themselves rather than uh, do a throwback to another driver. And this one in particular is a good one. Yes, old Rubberhead, uh, Kurt Busch in the Haas CNC 41. This one, very, very nostalgic. Of course, everybody remembers uh, a certain finish that this car had at Darlington. Oh, that actually really works for this scheme quite a bit, obviously, considering where it raced. And uh, it's interesting. I don't know, know exactly what they were kind of using to approximate the Sharpie there. I'm sure it has something to do with a CNC machine, though I'm not well versed enough in, a C in CNC uh, working uh, to make that determination. If I was uh, well versed in CNC stuff, I probably wouldn't be on YouTube. I'd probably be uh, in a lab coat somewhere. Regardless, uh, this is uh, yeah, this is a lovely looking car. Uh, they definitely got the colors right. I'm just taken back to like the old Hot Wheels days uh, when Hot Wheels had the license for this car, and you'd see them on the shelves uh, in the Hot Wheels displays. Very beautiful. Just uh, just again, just incredible nostalgia here from the glory days of NASCAR. Let's face it, uh, this kind of post 2001, pre 2004, 2006. That was kind of really the peak of everything. So when we see kind of the throwbacks to this era, it's just, uh, it's really nice. I still can't tell what the heck that's supposed to be. I think it's a drill bit. It looks like a drill bit to me. Yeah, it's probably part of the CNC machine. It's kind of clever because I think it is kind of trying to not quite be a ripoff. It's definitely trying to be a tribute. There was a paint chip there, but it, it came off, and now we've got a nice clean hood there. Uh, yeah, they, they do have to try to uh, get some creative license or have some creative license when they do these throwback schemes that aren't specifically supposed to be a Sharpie scheme. Uh, they have to kind of change them somewhat to make them not uh, too, like, uh, suey-wise. But, uh, you know, the most famous part of this car, and everybody knows it, is uh, is a certain race, certain race, certain couple cars involved, and a certain phrase uttered by uh, Daryl Waltrip. Uh, have you ever? Uh, no, no, I don't think I don't think I ever. So in the final run of our modern throwbacks, if you will, is Ryan Blaney's number twelve Duracell Menards car, which is throwing it back to his father's car from 2002 and 2003, the Jasper Transmissions car, the Ford Taurus. That one, very much a nostalgic car for me as well. Certainly one of those cars I always think of when I think of like NASCAR around 2003, 2004. It was one of the cars that was on all the video games, Dirt to Daytona, NASCAR Thunder 2004. Uh, I think NASCAR Racing 2003 has this as one of the base cars. It's, uh, it's an iconic paint scheme. And I can't wait to take a look at this one specifically because Blaney, I don't think Blaney, ha Blaney doesn't really have a bad paint scheme this year. There are some that are better than others, but by and large, he hasn't had a bad paint scheme this year. So let's get this one out. This is certainly one of the better ones for this year and certainly one of the throwbacks that a lot of people were very excited to get, particularly me. That's why I bought it. Let's take a look at it. So like I stated earlier, uh, Ryan Blaney hasn't had a bad scheme all year. This continues that trend. Tribute to Dave Blaney. Tribute to the Jasper car. Just uh, all around good stuff. All around good stuff. Let me zoom out a little bit. That's a little too too close in there. That's that's much better. Yeah, this is a uh, just again just so nostalgic for me. I love that they managed to make or work the Menard yellow in there to be able to make this work because the Jasper yellow, while it was a bit darker than this. If you look at it just at a glancing blow, it, it looks exactly the same as it was. A Jasper Transmissions actually comes out of, or Jasper, I think Jasper Racing Engines too is a, is a thing. But uh, Jasper is actually based in Jasper, Indiana, which is actually kind of interesting. And if you've ever gone to Jasper, Indiana, 
Uh, it's a very German place. Uh, there's like German flags everywhere, and it's uh, it's kind of strange to go there uh, and see just uh, how proud they are of their German heritage. <laughs> so, uh, and it's very far south. Like so it's like around Evansville, Indiana. So it's kind of interesting there. So let's take a closer look at this bad boy. Uh, certainly the blue, the gray, uh, just just all right here. Just all right. Get a good look at that fusion nose. That'll be gone next year. Of course, I also love to see Duracell associated with race cars. Uh, get some Raul Bocell references up in here. And uh, you got all the contingency sponsors for Menards on the back. And then you've got a little bit more. We do have a paint chip, unfortunately, and that was on the side of the car, which is kind of hidden, so you don't get to see that. But uh, I do like this one. I think my favorite uh, paint scheme of this year for Blaney has been the uh, Pennzoil one, the half and half with the Menards. I know some people didn't like it quite as much, uh, but I really do like it. And I've actually got a 124 coming of that, so stay tuned for that. But I think Blaney has a better throwback option. And I'd really like to see this car as a throwback. So without any further ado, the grand reveal of the mystery throwback car that I think Ryan Blaney should pay tribute to. And it's this. Mystery over. It, this is the Racing Champions Premier Series Dave Blaney number 93 Amico Ultimate Pontiac. This is what I think Ryan Blaney should do a throwback to, if not next year, at some point very soon, because I think this is one of the iconic uh, paint schemes ever in NASCAR. I love this car so much, and I would really love to see a modern interpretation of it. Uh, done at some point and it works because it is a Blaney it's his dad so you would think uh, that that this would be done so this is from the NASCAR 2000 series I got this at Dover last year when I went to the race uh, last year and uh, you can just see how much stuff comes with this car so there's a lot to go over here beautiful artwork on the package as well I don't know exactly how much these would have costed uh, I or would have cost uh, I would imagine it would be somewhere around the uh, $6 range, I'm guessing, in, in uh, 2000, 2001, when this would have been on the shelves. Uh, but you just never know. Not a whole lot to go over on the back of the package outside of a bunch of legalese and a place for Dave Blaney to sign it. Uh, I think I paid like a dollar, maybe $2 for this. So it certainly didn't hold its value, but to me, it has a lot of value because it's one of my favorite paint schemes of all time. So let's get this thing out, shall we? No more need to wait around. And certainly this one uh, didn't take too long to get out of the package. I think that glue was waiting to come undone. And look at that. The car is just aiming to fall out of there. Look at this. We got the, uh, oh, I think a lot of people are going to be interested in that. And probably interested in the fact that this car has opening features as well. So let's take a really detailed look at this one. You know, people sometimes ask why NASCAR fans complain so much. And I think one of the reasons is because of the fact that the bar was set impossibly high in the early 2000s. Case in point, this. Look how much stuff you get for the same price that you would otherwise pay for a NASCAR diecast of today. You've got the diecast under here somewhere, underneath a rain cover. We'll be taking a look at that in closer detail in just a second. But you also get a plastic display base, Racing Champions Premier Series. You get a trading card. That's nothing new. And then you get a little bit of info here on the back. Driver of the Amico Pontiac Grand Prix resides in Hartford, Ohio. Dave Blaney, the NASCAR 2000. Yeah, the NASCAR 2000 promotion was incredibly, uh, like a huge multimedia platform uh, promotion of NASCAR. It's probably one of the reasons why NASCAR boomed so greatly in 2001, just based on the amount of marketing that was spent in the year 2000. And so here you go, Dave Blaney's Amico Ultimate Pontiac. It's under there somewhere. Yeah, rain covers, completely printed all the way around, as accurate as can be in terms of what you would expect in a rain delay for a NASCAR race. Just, I mean, come on. Can you even imagine something like this happening or be, something like this being done in uh, the year uh, 2018? Remember, we're, we're almost 20 years, Trevor Bain, 20 years old, removed from this. And speaking of removed, let's get rid of this rain cover. It is, it is a nice little, like, polyester thing. It was, it was uh, sealed very nicely, and it's definitely aged very well. But certainly the thing that we really want to take a look at, and the thing that I think has aged very well because it's just a beautiful race car, 
is the Pontiac Grand Prix, or Grand Prix, sorry. you got to Americanize it when we're talking about a Pontiac. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, this one's lovely. Uh, again, look at this paint scheme. I love the red, white, and blue with the black. And what's interesting about this is that Amoco, the gas station, is actually back in the year 2018. Around 2003, Amoco was bought by BP, British Petroleum. And most of the Amoco stations were closed. Well, uh, go about 10 years in the future, go to 2008, and go to the BP oil spill. BP realized that they had some serious issues with PR, and they actually uh, started looking at ways of bringing the Amoco name back. Fast forward again, another 10 years, 2018, and there's actually starting to be many BP-owned stations converting back to Amoco. So you may be getting an Amoco in your town very shortly, so... Actually, what's old is new again. Hey, maybe Roger Penske could work out some... Oh, no, he probably couldn't because of Shell. Well, maybe somebody will work out some deal that Amico can come back and become a sponsor once again. So as you can see, this car is absolutely lovely. I guess we'll talk about Dave Blaney a little bit. He wasn't particularly successful in the Pontiac version of this car, though in 2001 when he got to Bill Davis Racing with the new Dodges, he was actually pretty successful. Probably should have had a win at Atlanta were it not for a loose wheel. And uh, that's just kind of unfortunate how that goes. But I do just love these Grand Prix. I think these are the best-looking stock cars of all time. Don't at me. Uh, because, yeah, just fantastic. Uh, now, this car does have a metal chassis, rubber tires, r uh, metal base, and I didn't even need to slap it on the, the bottom there. Uh, engine detail. Let's see if we can actually get in there and see. There we go. We get a little bit of light in there. Not fantastic, but probably just about as good as the ARC 124s these days. You also have some detail inside the cockpit. You don't have like a cloth a window net, but you do have like a steering wheel in there, uh, some of the uh, extra greebling, and uh, you even get a shift knob, it looks like, in there somewhere. So lots of detail here. I mean, again, the bar was set impossibly high for NASCAR diecast at this point in time i mean it was just it was ultra ultra premium ultra premium 93 gasoline like you get at amico amico ultimate wow look at that sponsorship tie-in amico please sponsor me but yeah i mean the, the bar was set impossibly high at this point in time uh so uh, it's it's nice to go back here and go into dollar bins and get probably three or four times the quality that you're getting these days uh, especially if you like a certain car a certain driver a certain paint scheme from this era uh this has been a fun video. It's been very nostalgic for me to go back and open something like this up, as well as talk about some of the great schemes of the past. So how was that for a NASCAR throwback review? Let me know what you thought down in the comments section below. Let me know if you have any classic diecasts that uh, you like and what you think of what Racing Champions was producing then versus what Lionel is producing now. Very interesting stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. And we'll see you in the next video.